with the Opportunity Zone Fund. You can do it yourself, um, which is a lot of record keeping um, and compliance to be able to keep track of all the costs that are going into that building or that rehab. It's not unlike uh, any other construction project, but it does all have to be reported. So you can do the do-it-yourself option and invest yourself and create your own Opportunity Zone Fund. You can also go into syndicated deals. There's a lot of syndicated deals out there where if you have a $500,000 gain, you can invest into directly into the limited partnership, uh, and then they'll manage all that for you. The drawback to the syndicated deals is usually that the minimums are very high for investing in those partnerships. It could be 500000 It could be as much as a million minimum uh, to go into a syndicated deal. It's going to be tough, I think, to do an Opportunity Zone fund for a small gain like $100,000, $200,000 because you're probably going to have to do it yourself. You probably won't be able to find a syndicated deal that has a minimum that low. You're typically dealing with projects or gains that are half a million or above. To qualify for the, the strategy, it has the property has to be, or the business has to be in a qualified opportunity zone. So there's maps online. We've got the links in the slides that you can go to look at those. They're fairly generous. They're based on census data from 2010. So when you look at a city like Nashville, Miami even, you know, half of the city is in an opportunity zone, uh, even though over the last 10 years, the geography has changed significantly and you've got very high demand areas that are now in these opportunity zones uh, and are being developed. If you're gonna go the do-it-yourself route, at least 90% of the, um, the investments in the fund itself have to be in the opportunity zone property. Typically, it's real property. That's the easiest way to qualify. Uh, and then I talked about the 10-year hold period. So substantiating, like I said, said it's a lot of record keeping. If you're building a building, you're going to be keeping these records anyhow. You're going to have your AIA documents, your invoices from the contractors. You're definitely going to want to keep track of all that. You may be able to loop cost seg in with that as well if you keep good records. Uh, all the improvements, all that is going to need to be tracked. There's always a possibility of audit, so you're going to want to have to going to want to keep really good records of all the costs that are going into uh, that rehab or the new construction. 